If you had a few pieces of advice for the next generation of collectors. Always the same rules. Always the same rules. Buy what you like. Yeah. Buy the seller. Have a big discipline to buy watch with the quality. Yeah. Try to be humble and to take a lot of information from everywhere, from the books, from the media, from the website. That's it. That's it. Always the same. So John, we're back after almost 10 years since yeah. the first time we sat down. Welcome back to Geneva. <laughs> Thank you. It's been, it's been too long. So what has changed in the world of watches in the past 10 years since we first did uh, this? More interest around the world, especially on the vintage and modern watches. Yeah. And also the people discover the investment in tangible assets like wristwatches. And how, how has your approach to watches changed in the past 10 years since we did this first? Always the same approach. I like nice things. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Maybe it's hard now. Harder because there's more, there's more competition. There's more yeah, money, more there's more people. More money. The money is... Uh, okay, the watches are rarer than money. That's for sure. And so today we're back after, you know, the, the first episode we filmed over 10 years ago. So how did you decide to, to pick these watches for, for this episode? I tried to find in my collection something unusual, almost unique. So let's, let's talk about the, the pocket watches yeah. first. So the, the pocket watches you brought are minute repeating split second yeah. perpetual. Uh, perpetual calendar from Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe yeah. and Cartier. So three of the great brands yeah. in the world. And, you know, the, I think part of the reason that you brought them was to show how watches were made back then. So yeah. all of these are based on the exact same EVOS, the exact same calendar. Yeah, right? built in the valley of the Bersou from a Piguet family mm -hmm. with Gégé Galcoutre movement and was finished later by the house, by the brand, like Ademar. This is a early one was manufacturing between 24 26. This one was manufacturing in 39 mm -hmm. and this one in uh, 34 35. And how how do the three watches differ? How do the the calibers differ? Is the finishing very different on all three? No, the caliber the size is the same, 17 line. The most visible thing is the, the case and the dial. The other Marpigay has a nice Breguet numerals applied on the dial, mm -hmm. silver dial. And that case is white gold or platinum? Uh, no, no, it's white gold yeah. with a nice Art Deco bow mm -hmm. and a nice profile. Maybe this one has a the better sound. Very crispy. There's a Patek with an incredibly unique black gilt dial. So the, the only one with a black dial. Yeah. And also the one that, that we've seen in advertisements. If there's You're one right. advertisement that yeah. shows this watch. The Goobling advertising uh, for the States market. Yeah. And the other, other thing is interesting in this watch is uh, the moon. I never saw other Patek with the perpetual moon face with the face uh, NML in the center of the moon. Mm -hmm. Always uh, is a plain gold disc. So it's possible that this with a unique black dial and then of course the, the moon face it was probably, I mean, we can say probably a unique piece made for a special person. We actually know yeah. who that person was. Yeah, it was a Mr. Gilmore, uh -huh. with the CEO of the, the grocery store, Up John, and it was a great car collector. He loved mechanical things. Right. He was also a close friend of, of Walt Disney, I think. Yeah, right. So really kind of a great American family yeah. was the owner of, of this watch. And this uh, Cartier is uh, incredible. I saw another example very similar, was uh, made with the Le Couch name on it made for Mr. Lecoutre with an enamel bezel. And this Cartier is an is incredible Skeleton. piece of art. And so when people think of Cartier, they usually think of, of something like this, which yeah. is you know, kind of the quintessential Cartier, with the exception of the crash, which has become yeah. very popular. Yeah, now the crash is so uh, popular. But when I think of Cartier, this is what, what I think of. Yeah, in the 20, they, they introduced the Tank Sintre, this curved watch. The dial, very simple. Yeah. And also they made incredible platinum bracelet with nice deprimed buckle. This is a piece of art. You see the, the details of this watch is incredible. And when, when was this watch made? In 29. It sold in 30 in Paris. And so, I mean, th this watch to me is kind of everything that, that, that Cartier is. And yeah. the Centre in particular is, you know, I would say exceedingly difficult to, to find, having been down that journey myself, you know, uh, to find one in, in platinum with a platinum bracelet. And this one is actually confirmed by Cartier to, to have been born yeah. with a platinum bracelet. Yeah. How many of those are, are out there? Uh, well, there's another one, was in auction in Sotheby a few years ago, with the same bracelet, the same case, mm -hmm. but with the cursive 
senior tool because it was sold in New York. Mm -hmm. And now there are, there are other few examples with different bracelet yeah. on the market. So a handful, we'll say. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's something that is is often lost in the conversation about vintage Cartier is they just simply don't exist. It's not like a Submariner where there's a thousand of them out there. Yeah. But it's a small handful. And we have other Cartiers here. Yeah, this is a different story. It came from Cartier London. Yeah. You know, Jean-Jacques Cartier, the other brother, set up the London branch and he designed this uh, pebble. It's a round with a square dial. Also other nickname is baseball field watch. Yeah. And uh, also made a very nice dark gray dial with the white Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. I think it was almost unique. In the same period, he launched also the Banois Rolanger. And then Cartier London books, the name Oval. Mm -hmm. It's a big oval. Yeah, maxi oval. oval. Yeah. Also, this is a gray dial with the white numeral. And London uh, was a particular brand because they, the dial always are and made, you remember the Euro Sintre with the blue dial, black dial, yeah. <laughs> and painted by hand the Roman gold numerals. Yeah. I remember when I started buying this kind of watch in the almost 30, 40 years ago, many dealers thought it was a fake dial, yeah. fake case. Nobody knew about Cartier London. Cartier has really, in the past few years, I mean, really in the past three years, exploded in terms of, of prominence. And in yeah, it was a sleeping interest. company because uh, I remember in the night it was very popular. Right. And the collector, three, four collectors around the world, they, they pay a lot of money for the Cartier. Mm -hmm. And now with the help of the social media, the collector discovered Cartier. It's something different, something new. Yeah, and I think I saw somewhere you and Tyler, the creator, talking about Cartier. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember it was in Monaco auction. Yeah. I met him and I made the the famous shot with the, his hat and the, yeah. the crash on the wrist. Yeah. So Cartier is obviously a great love of yours, and then Patek uh, and these these two world times here are really similar to the the, the pocket washes, and the, yeah. the mechanism is very much the same. Yeah, it was always a Bosch. This was finished by Patek, was completely different, mm -hmm. a very high quality movement, and you see the case and the manufacturing is great. This is more Art Deco design. Golay Stahl was a, also jewelry, yeah. and uh, later was a great uh, Patefield dealer in Geneva. Right. Is, uh, the office and the shop was uh, over the Four Seasons Hotel. Mm -hmm. Still there, there is a big sign on the lake. Yeah, and the, the mechanism here, it, it was a Lecoult, a Jaeger? It was a Lecoult, modified. But the, it was Louis Cartier who developed the, the mechanism itself. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of the watches on, on this table really represent the, the old school way of, of watchmaking, which was yeah. shared knowledge. Which is very different than today, where everyone cares about in-house and you know Patek does this, AP does that, yeah. in-house chronograph, etc. I mean, this is really kind of the old school way, which in, in some cases is, is more interesting because it was it was collaborative, it was friendly in a certain way, uh, and it was also it was interesting to see the different riff on 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 some Ebausch as we've yeah. seen with the, the pocket watches and now the the world timer here. And even the, this Omega shares a dial effectively yeah. with with no, several no, others. There's an incredible cloisonné dial with a full of colors. Is a manufacturer from a stand dial company, mm -hmm. and in the same period, they manufacture with the same artist many dial with the cloisonne finishing for the Pate Philippe brand. And, and Stern is now owned by Richemont. Yeah, now there is a name is Stern Creation is in Lausanne. Mm -hmm. They are very specialized in the to cut the stone for dial. Yeah. And you being extremely Italian, I would say, we have to have an Italian watch here. Yeah. This is this is the Panerai. Yeah. The Panerai, I bought a very long time ago, almost 30 years ago. Yeah. I was very attracted by the color of the dial. Yeah. I found a nice bracelet by Hermes shop and I had it because it's matching color. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Also, the condition is great. And I think another watch that I often think of with you, or something I often think of with you, is, is vintage Rolex. Yeah. But not often Daytonas and Samaritans, which you, you've certainly dabbled in, but something a little bit earlier. And here we have what I think is the ultimate Rolex reference, which is the 6062. Yeah, no, Rolex in the 1950 introduced the first moon phase in Oster case, mm -hmm. and uh, all in uh, gold case with a different kind of index also, with the star index. In the 52, they decided to manufacture in, um, in steel. And they made very few pieces, like a few hundred pieces. This example came from 53, mm -hmm. and it was um, in an auction in Hong Kong. It came from original owner. It was very attracted by the, 
the dial, the quality of the dial, the original glass, the original bracelet, and also the original engraved back with the stainless steel registered patent. And th this to me, 6062 is kind of the... Please worry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you insist. This is, uh, this with the exception of the 4113 is kind of the holy grail Rolex, yeah. would you say? Yeah. And then what's on your wrist today? Ah, today I wore maybe the most photographer was of the Geneva Weeks. <laughs> Is very rare. Zenith at Primero in white gold with the original white gold bracelet. They made only 10 examples wow. in white gold and another 10 examples with the white gold and the gold diamond bezel. Wow. Have yeah. you ever seen one of those? Just one photo in a whole catalog. Yeah. So and kind of the, the Holy Grail El Primero, the original El Primero. Yeah, there are some prototype Holy Grail around 69 and you know, the special dial with the stars, index, uh, they yeah. are very, very interesting. And so, you know, as, as you've been collecting now, how many years? Too many years? Too many, maybe. <laughs> uh, I started in 78, uh, 44 years. Okay. Is there anything that's come out modern in recent years that you that is exciting to you? Few independent, few. Yeah, which ones? Dufour, Laurent Ferrier. Yeah. I like also Richard May because uh, he introduced something new, something different on the market. Mm -hmm. He didn't copy others. Right. And uh, other copy. Right. <laughs> well, that's how it works, right? Yeah. Do you own a Richard Mille? Just one. I what? bought in the auction because it was not so expensive. Because <laughs> for me, the Richard Mille price are a little insane. So I mean, the, the, the last episode we shot, I think it's, it's fair to say, inspired a lot of people and I yeah. think turned a, a lot of people on to the idea of collectors such as yourself, these mega collectors that have seen so much more than, than people mm. like us at home. If you had a few pieces of advice for the next generation of collectors. Always the same you? rules. Always the same rules. Buy what you like. Yeah. Buy the seller. Have a big discipline to buy watch with the quality. Yeah. Try to be humble and to take a lot of information for everywhere, from the books, from the media, from the website, does it? That's it. Always the same. And so what is the watch you wear most these days? A very simple watch. This summer I wore the old bronze Tudor. Mm -hmm. I wore the, the Lodinky edition of the Longines. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few Casio. Casio? Yeah, I like the technology of Casio. I was always attracted by Japanese brands. Sure. I love his Grand Seiko. Yeah. Do you own any Grand Seiko? Just one I bought in, in Japan. It was a steel uh, high frequency with the boxing paper mm -hmm. in the Ginza. I paid a fortune. <laughs> I made the mistake with the credit card. Was, uh, the cost was uh, $1,500. was uh, $15,000. <laughs> <laughs> the final receipt was $15,000. I made the bad calculation. So last time we, we shot this, you had a Rolex split second 4113, yeah. which is the Holy Grail Rolex. Yeah. Split the only is what? There's 13 of those, 11 yeah. of those. 12, I think 12, 12 pieces. So what? What was then probably a million dollar watch? What is now probably a, I don't know. a few million dollar watch, like a very very nice watch. And you decided to take a knife that just happened to be sitting yeah. on the table, and you popped open the case back with it. Yeah. And that has become something of a, a legend in, in our <laughs> little world, which is crazy yeah. but true. First of all, it was a no cheese knife. It was a chasteurie. <laughs> knife to cut ham and salami. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for me, it's easy to open a watch. Yeah. You, you, have, a, you have a knife or knife here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can open this pocket watch easily. These are all oyster case and so difficult to open. Have people asked you about that moment since then? Yeah, many times. Please, the cheese knife put on the auction for charity. We'll do that someday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my work for sure. And then I would say finally, looking ahead to the next 10 years, what, what do you think we'll see? Will watches continue to grow? Will will be a refocus on, on vintage? You know, the watch like a car is a, maybe the most important industrial product made in the past century. Mm -hmm. Everybody owns a car, everybody owns a watch. And now there is a new generation, they're wearing eye watches. Right. And still the watch is the most sellable product in the world. I think it will continue in the yeah. watch mania.